So the green microphone I've got here, which is the V5 200 LB, this is for live productions. So um, if I was playing live with a couple of other band members, if I had a drummer, or if I was in a jazz trio or quartet, something like that, or um, I was playing in a Kaylee band, or you know, whatever, whatever it is, if I'm playing a live situation, possibly with with other people, or you know, perhaps you've got an audience listening as well, um, this is ideal for that. So what this one does is um, to kind of put it into layman terms, if you like, or just just possibly kind of nutshell it. Um, this just picks up, this is designed to pick up just the violin and what it does, it, it tends to, or it's, it's going to try to block out any other sound which is outside about a foot or, or so of the actual violin. So it would try to, it would try to block out the other instruments. So if I was playing with, with, I don't know, five other people in a band and they too had microphones, I don't want this microphone picking up all the other instruments as well. Because when it comes to the mix down stage, if we're all bleeding into everybody else's microphone, Microphones, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to mix because I've got my violin sound that's been recorded through this plus I've got the drummer coming through it as well and then I've got a bit of saxophone or another string player coming through it as well so what this is going to do is is put in a little bit of suppression so that it just blocks out some of the sound audience noises as well that are a foot or so outside of the violin um, because there is a suppression on there, some sound uh, the, or the, the sound has to go along the whole spectrum. So some sound, of course, is going to it's going to disappear because it's not taking. If you imagine, I suppose if you imagine the sound of my violin when I play is going to fill the whole room, but all this is doing is just taking sort of a small bubble around my violin. So I'm losing some of the ambient sounds outside of the violin, um, kind of in, in a sort of a nutshell kind of way. Um, but that's great for live productions because I don't want to pick up anything outside of my violin. Um, I just want to pick up preferably just me because it's going to be so much easier to mix me, get, get my violin to have a nice sound, put some reverb, put some effects, that kind of thing. Otherwise, like I said, if you've got all the drummer and everything, you're going to be adding the effects to him as well and everybody else that you're with. Um, if you want to do a studio recording, of course, then they do have a separate microphone for that, which isn't going to do any suppression and it is going to pick up the full spectrum. But of course, you'd be in a studio environment where it would just be you as well. For my violin and the way my violin is and, you know, the, the kind of the, the sound that comes from the violin, it's very high and it's very sweet. I personally prefer the sound that you get from the tailed piece. But, you know, it's just a case of trial and error, depending on, it really doesn't matter. There is no right or wrong way. Some of you might like that, that nicer, kind of fuller, kind of more gritty sound that you possibly get from underneath the soundboard. But like I said, for me, um, especially because I do a lot of studio based recordings as well, um, you know, re recording for albums and backing tracks and all that kind of thing. So uh, for me, underneath the, tail, underneath the tail piece works really well with my violin. So what they've done is split the violin frequencies into three sections. So they've got their fundamental tone register, which is the very highest that the violin, or the very highest note register level that the violin can get to, uh, ranging to the very lowest. Then the next thing you've got is the primary overtone register, um, which is amplified by the soundboard and it is dependent on the wood of the violin, the varnish of the violin, all those kind of different aspects on the violin. And then you've got the secondary overtone register, which is the friction between the bow and the strings. And what that does is it picks up the movement of air molecules um, as, as the, obviously as the bow is moving along the strings. Two things that were important for me, something that didn't cause any damage to my violin, which this certainly doesn't, it's very unobtrusive. Um, and also I wanted something that, that was going to catch an ambient sound from my violin. Um, I really like the sound that my ears hear. So if you've got something that's attached to the body of the violin, that's going to give you a different sound than what my ears are hearing after the sound has gone through the violin and it's come out and it's come into my ears. So that was more of the sound that I wanted to capture, um, which is all the overtones and the undertones of the violin, which is exactly what this microphone is based on. So it's a very clever idea and just the whole way they've executed it from the, just everything inside it to the delivery method as well has been very well thought out, um, you know, and they've come out with a really good product. So the sound is, I find the sound is nice and clear, it's crisp, it's got a nice good range. Um, there is some slight loss with the green one due to suppression, but again, you really don't want to be using a studio type microphone um, when you're gigging and you're, you, you, you want to record a live performance with other musicians, because that would just be a total nightmare. You'd be picking up so much stuff 
but because you'd be sitting within the mix of say four or five other musicians as well the loss of suppression really wouldn't matter whatsoever in fact it's just kind of a uh, it's the lesser of two evils isn't it what you're losing in, su in suppression you're gaining a much better mix if you were to use a completely different microphone so for example the hook microphone that I had um, that would be no good for me because it's going to pick up everything it's going to pick up everybody in the back of the room and the audience and, and all that kind of stuff um, I, like I said before, I prefer it uh, to go in the, the tailpiece for me, for my violin, but there's no right or wrong with that, it's just a case of what you like and the sound that you like out of that. The silicone cable is, is just genius. Um, I've never actually seen anything like that before on a microphone, um, but it's really good. You'd be surprised how much clanging you get from the cable on the violin, especially when you're moving around and you know the cable comes loose and everything. Um, but together with the foam wedge and the cable, I think it's, uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. It's invisible to the crowd or it's invisible to the audience as well. So if I probably hadn't mentioned it, you might not even have known that I had the microphone uh, inside the violin or, or underneath the tailpiece at all there, maybe except for possibly the wire. If I was wearing black, you possibly still wouldn't have seen it anyway. And also uh, they say that you can leave it in the violin case as well. So you don't have to take, keep taking it out. Obviously just, just you can wrap up the cable. It's got one of those Velcro ties around the cable. So you don't have to keep removing the microphone. Obviously the hook over one that I had, I had to keep removing that and putting it back in its case because I wouldn't be able to shut the lid of the case. But this one, pop the violin straight in, shut the case, zip it up and off you go, jobs are good. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.